Hello, my name is Epic Bubble, and I sometimes go by the name of Simon, and this is a thoughts video. A thoughts video on Magic the Gathering. Probably shouldn't be doing this since it's basically one of the biggest games out there. It's not a board game, so to speak. It is a collectible or trading card game, but it is featured in hobby stores next to board games, so I thought I'd give it a fair comparison. Magic the Gathering, for those that don't know, has been around for a very long time. It came out in 1994, I want to say, and it's been going ever since. It's the game that has kept a lot of stores in the green for the large 19th, 20th, and 21st century, and most likely the 22nd century as well. It's the game where if you go into any hobby store today, you'll most likely find people playing Magic or Warhammer. It's going to be the game that you'll go into Friday Night Magic, and you'll see people playing. Saturday is constructed, Sunday will be Legacy. There's basically every single day of the weekend is dedicated to magic at a lot of these stores. And it sells really well. Now, the overall design of magic is very relatively simple. If you go and look at it, it has pretty clear mechanics. You put down cards, use those cards to then pay to put out other cards, which can be creatures or spells, and then use those creatures to spells to basically kill your opponent, get his life total down to from 20 to 0. There's not much else to really say in that regard. What is impressive is just the large quantity of cards Wizards of the Coast has managed to achieve. You would think the design space for the game is actually quite small now, but every so often they do come up with a new and innovative concept. I think the color system in particular is incredible. The idea of having five colors and each color is strong in certain areas, but weak in others. Um, this is what a lot of other card games kind of get wrong, where if I say, look at, say, Hearthstone. Hearthstone, even though it's a digital-only game, you look at it and you see, okay, well, I have this person. This person is a hunter, right? And this hunter can do damage, it can summon big creatures, it can also summon small creatures, and it can do this and it can do that as well. But then you also have, say, the Paladin class. And the Paladin can also do the same thing. Some big creatures, small creatures, it can deal damage directly, it can protect these creatures. It's relatively the same things, just coded or slightly tweaked a bit to make it fit the theme of that class a bit better. Whereas with Magic, Magic is very restrictive. There's green cards that only green cards can do. There is blue cards, which only blue cards can do. For example, blue cards can counter the opponent's spells. Whereas fire or red cards, they do direct damage to players and creatures. While green cards can't do any, both of those two things, they can just summon big creatures that will hopefully tank those other two spells. So the colors kind of play off each other in a very nice fashion. There's five colors, and all of which have allied colors, which some share some similar traits, but not many. They also have enemy colors, which are almost directly oppose them, and they almost are basically direct counters towards each other. So, for example, blue can counter, counter cards, whereas green has cards that can't be countered. And that's really, really clever. It gives a wonderful sense of identity where you kind of know what a card already does, simply by looking at its color, which is fantastic. Now, I do enjoy playing Magic, but let me say that I've been playing Magic for a long time. I started when I was like grade four, 10 years old, and then continued on in primary school, and then stopped for a while, and then once I got into university, I then picked up Zendikar in 2009, and had a wonderful blast playing that, and then I started playing a couple of tournaments, and that's when I started fading away. Honestly, the big thing that happened was I became very frustrated at the way magic is sold. You essentially can only get magic in a few sealed products, which generally are very expensive, generally are sought out by collectors, or are mostly just intro decks that used to design to introduce players to the game. The rest of the time, you're trying to get your cards through boosters, which are randomized, which means if you want to kind of get a certain deck going because of one card. You first have to find maybe four copies of that card and start building a deck around that. But again, that involves trading with other people, which is good. It involves being social, involves going to places like your local, local hobby store and actually trading with players. Unfortunately, it kind of has gotten to a stage where people don't trade anymore 
it's more of a case of this card is going to cost you $50 to actually get from me. Or we can trade the equivalent value in monetary value. Which kind of sucks. It kind of diminishes the this, you know the rare for the rare or the uncommon for the uncommon. Or maybe two mythic rares for one or eight rares. And that is not great. Magic is very expensive. For example, if you want to do draft, whereas which you get three boosters and you can then try and make a deck using those, that's going to cost you around, what, $16 now, I want to say. Or you can do constructed, which is going to cost you six boosters, which is going to be more like $30. And again, that kind of doesn't seem like good value for money when you can think about it. You can buy, say, Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Spawn, which is, again, a game very similar to Magic. But... That is a fixed card pool, and when you get those cards, you'll have access to those cards, and there's no rares or uncommons or legendaries or whatnot. There's nothing like that. And that's almost the reason why I stopped playing Magic, because essentially all my friends finished university, and then we just kind of started playing other things. Now, my friends still play Magic from on, on occasion. We kind of play tabletop Magic, or we'll do ones which don't involve like very competitive decks um but occasionally someone will come like one of the friends will come and he'll be, have net decked something he'll put like 200 dollars into that deck and then we play up against it and it just is a whitewash because that deck it becomes far too powerful and it's because those cards are very expensive and they're expensive because those are very good cards and they're hard to deal with and that's the big frustration with me magic the gathering by itself is a lot of fun i love it but it's pricing and it's structure of the giving out cards is it's pretty much outdated at this point it was cute back in the early days in the 1990s and also the 2000s where it was going off of a generation of basically baseball trading cards right and now it doesn't really work anymore when you're competing against other such good games. Now, I'm not going to say things like Twilight Imperium. There's going to be Twilight Imperium or Friday Night Twilight Imperium. There's never going to be that case. But all I'm saying is it doesn't take long for something to uprise and have a revolution. It won't take long before, say, another card game comes out which is as incredible. Now... I should point that out that's unlikely to happen simply because a lot of people are invested into magic. This is the same reason why a lot of people are invested into Warhammer. They have the miniatures, these people have their cards, and these cards are valuable. And if obviously magic started being less popular, those cards would lose value. And that's fine. But for me, really is it it's a case of just I can't have access to the cards I want. I then struggle to build the decks I want. And it kind of is too expensive. That is simply the bottom line for me. For me, I have Arkham Heart, the, ca the card game. I have Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Spawn. And there's still other things like Netrunner that you can also pick up. There's a lot of other options out there. Magic the Gathering is a hobby amongst itself. If you are a board gamer, you're probably not going to have enough money to also spend buying Magic the Gathering. If you do, you probably have a very successful job and you probably don't have a lot of time to pursue either hobby. Again, I'm just doing normal rational statements. These are most likely incorrect. But it just makes you think. Do you want a hobby by itself, which has a very, very strong support structure to it, where people you can you know you can always grab a game at on a Friday night, or would you like to play board games with friends? Again, please don't get me wrong. I think Magic is a fantastic design. I just kind of wish they took their pricing model into the 22nd century and just made it so that everyone has access to equal cards and the skill really does come in to making awesome, awesome decks. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I waffled on so much about Magic Gathering, but I thought it would be something that I should actually talk about. If you have enjoyed this video, then remember to hit the like and subscribe button. If you didn't like this video, then hit, you know, hit the dislike button and that will give me a better clue as to what kind of content you guys like. As always, thank you so much for watching. That's going to be it for me. Bye-bye.